Welcome back, friends. Welcome back to Propaganda Watch. I'm your host, James Corbett of CorbettReport.com. And this week on the D program, I'm going to ask you to cast your mind back to the beginning of this phony, ginned up Corona world order crisis way back in March of this year when I warned that there was going to be a propaganda vector by which one old and perhaps long in the tooth globalist scaremonger story was going to be swapped out for another newer more vibrant globalist scaremonger story in order to better control and micromanage every aspect of your life. Yes, if you haven't noticed it by now, you are about to notice it on a large scale, specifically the connecting of one globalist-backed, agenda-pushing scaremonger story with another globalist-backed, agenda-pushing scare story designed to spur the public into action of various sorts, or to design more specifically to allow governments to crack down on the public in various ways. And I think it's easy to see how those two agendas go together, but we are going to see that linked in the public imagination more and more going out from here. Yes, climate change, coronavirus, whatever, whatever ginned up crisis we have to give the public in order for them to swallow our snake oil medicine which consists of complete technocratic control over their lives. If you have not watched that particular episode of the Propaganda Watch series, I will suggest you go back and do so. It's under the title Coronavirus and Climate Change. I will, of course, link it up in the show notes so you can go and watch it and see some of the particulars of that report. Again, from back in March, where we were noting people like May Bove of 350.org, noting that the Corona World Order uh, is an example of how we can impose incredible restrictions and change society overnight, or Ed Conway arguing in the pages of the Sunday Times that the coronavirus could be the trigger for the new industrial revolution. The money quote from that particular article being, Hardcore climate activists have long railed against economic growth. Oh, stupid people rising out of poverty. Ah, it's horrible. And in the months ahead, they may have their wish granted, as GDP growth from China to Europe and the U.S. is hammered by coronavirus. Yay! Lockdown, shut down the economy, people out of work, people in food lines. Yay! That's such a win for the environment or something. Whatever excuse we have to come up with, that is the mentality of the people that we're dealing with. And of course, the logic of that has only continued to play out in its inevitable way since that time. Again, back in March, six months ago, we've seen, of course, the World Economic Forum and the Great Global Reset and uh, the Build Back Better slogan, that ubiquitous slogan for 2020 and forward that is coming up everywhere now. Yes, it seems like Agenda 2030 has just been moved up a decade. Uh, And yes, it is, once again, as we sit here now at the six-month mark of this ginned-up phony crisis, it is worth once again cogitating on the fact that this is not... This is not just a happenstance. This is part of an agenda. It is a continuity of agenda that we are seeing from the old paradigm of, oh my God, that life-giving CO2 gas is going to kill us all, to, oh my God, this coronavirus is going to kill us all. Asterisk, well, not really, but anyway, give up give up all your rights. And uh, the latest iteration of this came out just last week from our old friends at CNN, who were pumping this under the title, The Pandemic Didn't Solve Climate Change, this week's disasters are proof. Which starts by noting that if you thought COVID-19 restrictions like enforced lockdowns and social distancing would put a lasting dent in our collective carbon footprint and save the world from warming, you were mistaken. Earlier this year, in the midst of a horrific news cycle and a rapidly mounting death toll, that notion was a welcome silver lining to the pandemic as people around the world stayed at home, unemployed and getting broke and starving to death to stop the spread of the coronavirus, greenhouse gas emissions from the energy and transport industries plummeted, dropping to record lows. But it may have given some a false sense that the worst effects of climate change were being mitigated. They're not. Cue scary music, and of course cue the inevitable references to recent wildfires and hurricane activity, as if it's unprecedented in human history and we've never seen the climate change before, ever in the history of the world. Why is it changing now? It's because you are out there doing all of that horrible, life-giving economic activity to sustain yourself and your family, you dirty, horrible human being, you. 
yada yada yada, which of course is all based on easily demonstrable lies. Uh, actually, the worst kind of lies, because they're generally unfalsifiable, as I have talked about at length in various work that I've done on the subject in the past. I will reference you specifically to a video that I did four years ago on weather is not climate that debunked all of these notions about this extreme weather being proof, proof positive, settled science, folks, that climate change is the culprit for changing weather. Of course, it is not. And you can see it again, even in this particular CNN article we're referencing, where this particular hurricane season is now proof positive. You see, we told you there'd be more hurricanes, and now there are more hurricanes. Therefore, you see, climate change equals more hurricanes, just like we told you all along. Whereas, of course, if you go back to that pre previous video that I'm referencing here, Weather Is Not Climate, you'll see that during the longest drought in recorded history in the U.S. for hurricanes, i.e. the longest period of low activity of tropical cyclones in the, uh, in the U.S., making U.S. landfall, you didn't hear much about that argument, did you? You just heard any time there was any sort of hurricane, it's because of global warming. But well, you know, the longest drought in U.S. landfall hurricanes in recorded history. Yeah, well, whatever. Uh, but now there's an active season, so now it's proof positive. A again, I, I shouldn't have to elaborate on this for anyone with their head screwed on straight or anyone who has actually looked at the evidence that supposedly underlies this consensus that we're always told about. But unfortunately, very few people do. If you're more interested in generally this topic, please go to the sidebar of CorbettReport.com, click on that climate change tab. You will see lots and lots of work I have done on this subject over the years, talking about the unfalsifiability of the global warming crowd, the weather is not climate, talking about the alteration of the weather record in the Orwellian attempt to make the past uh, colder and the, the recent present or the recent past warmer in order to make the chart look the way it's supposed to look, and all of the other chicanery and tricks that have been played on the, uh, the public in the name of settled science, exactly, almost as if it was a template for what we are living through right now, where once again, we are bowing down to the technocratic priest class that has all the answers about this pandemic, even when every prediction they have made about it is demonstrably absolutely wrong, we still have to listen to their every pronouncement and do whatever they say in order to mitigate this non-crisis that is not killing people in record numbers. Uh, exactly as with the climate quote-unquote crisis. So we know how this plays out. As it plays out in the CNN article, they go on to say, all of these extreme weather events can be linked to global warming, asterisk, citation needed, caused by rising levels of carbon dioxide and other heat-trapping greenhouse gases in the atmosphere, mainly from humans, dirty, filthy, horrible humans trying to live burning fossil fuels. There are grim reminders that the world has a much bigger existential crisis on its hands than COVID-19. Well, I'll agree with that general statement, although I won't agree that global warming is the existential crisis. And it will take a lot more than a few months of foregoing air and car travel to stop it. Climate change is not stopping because of lockdowns, said Eileen Kelman, a professor of risk resilience and global health at University College London. The extreme weather which we are witnessing is not excessive in terms of the history of humanity. Dot, dot, dot. It is very much in line with what we would expect under climate change. Period. <laughs> please, please pause this video. Read and reread that sentence because... I think there's a very interesting thing going on here, and probably something very interesting being covered up by that ellipsis in that middle of the sentence that CNN unhelpfully does not provide the full context for. But yes, the extreme weather we're witnessing is not excessive in terms of the history of humanity. All right, yeah. So what's the problem? Oh, it's very much in line with what we'd expect under climate change. Well, again, what does that mean? Anthrop uh, anthropogenic climate change? And if so, to what extent is the anthropogenic factor? Exactly how many decil decimal places of accuracy can we pinpoint that number? And and what's the uh, data underlying it? Ah, details, shmeetails. It's what we would expect under climate change. Uh, of course, they're just trying to paint a narrative, but it's interesting how they selectively used that quotation and didn't provide the full quotation, which probably would have been at least somewhat more illuminating in its uh, proper context. But just in case you start pining for the good old days before the lockdowns and the masks and the forced vaccinations and whatever else is coming in this uh, great corona crisis, uh, don't get too comfortable because this is just the start 
of the crisis. This is not this is not going to be a, a, just a temporary leave from reality and we'll return to the old normal. No, 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 no. As they keep telling you, prepare because this is just the beginning as they go on to say in this article from CNN. People have made a huge sacrifice. They have sacrificed their social lives, their family interactions, their mobility, and so on. And of course, the as we know, the and so on includes your entire livelihood, the businesses you've spent your entire life building up, the, uh, the, your life savings, all of that, of course, put on the line and for many people completely abolished and uh, demolished in the course of a few months. But I guess that 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 can be covered in and so on. And emissions have declined quite markedly because of that. But we also see that these emission reductions are very temporary, said the, prof the professor they're citing here, adding that they're already going up again. And why is that? It's because these emissions reductions were the result of changing our, or reducing our activities, but not the cause of any structural change of how our society actually works. Yes, no, what you have seen is just a taste of what the conditions of ne neo-feudalism that we'll have to live under in order to appease the, the weather gods. But... It's just a taste. No, no, no. We're going to have to make structural changes to the way society functions to hardwire in the types of restrictions that we're starting to see right now in the name of this corona crisis. So finally, they end up with this money quote where they say, this has been to some extent been a test run of the positives and negatives, the possibilities and the harm. What we need to ensure is that we are helping people. We are creating jobs. We are supporting livelihoods at the same time as reducing all forms reducing all forms of consumption, and this should not happen overnight. Yes, once again, it goes back to that old formula that, uh, of course, Bill Gates would be happy to teach you the math on, that, yeah, we have this consumption, we have this human population that's creating all this carbon dioxide. One of these things is going to have to get to zero. This equation has four factors, a little bit of multiplication. So you've got a thing on the left, CO2, that you want to get to zero. And that's going to be based on the number of people, the services each person's using on average, the energy on average for each service, and the CO2 being put out uh, per unit of energy. So let's look at each one of these and see how we can get this down to zero. Uh, probably one of these numbers is going to have to get pretty near to zero. <laughs> oh, oh, good one, Bill. Yes, uh, uh, something will have to get pretty near zero, won't it? I mean, CO2, human population, whatever. And, oh, we should listen to Epstein's good friend Bill Gates and his associates when they lecture us about what steps we need to take to save ourselves from this scourge of coronavirus, right? Uh, the vaccines or whatever else is coming. And if you question it, you're crazy, right? No, you'll forgive me if I have no truck for the cover stories and code words that these eugenicists use in their quest, their openly admitted quest, to reduce the world's population. They don't even try to hide that aspect of it, but none, nevertheless, we should 100% take unquestioningly that the very same people who worry so much, so openly, about the growing human population should be the ones entrusted with caring for that human population and making sure every child is well nurtured. Uh, obviously, it is garbage, and it exposes, of course, the cover story that this is not about climate. It isn't about saving Mother Earth. It never was. It is about control. It is about micromanaging every aspect of the human population, every aspect of their daily lives, i.e. every aspect of your daily life, what you can and cannot do, what you must and must not do in the name of saving the earth or whatever they come up with next, uh, saving yourself, saving grandma from some killer virus, whatever, whatever the excuse of the day is. So no, we should not have truck for those cover stories and code words, and it should enrage us to see them shoving this in our face and expecting us to swallow this feces sandwich with a smile on our face. It should upset us. And someone that I think captured that sentiment much more articulately than I just did in that little rant, is Eric Worrall, who wrote a post about this CNN piece that we've been looking at uh, today uh, on whatsupwiththat.com uh, under the title CNN, The Pandemic Didn't Solve Climate Change, the week's, This Week's Disasters Are Proof, where he notes as uh, underneath this, this CNN article, is anyone else 
fed up with this miserable, small-minded green vision of the future, in which lockdowns are considered a trial run for what we shall all have to endure on a permanent basis. I don't want a future in which I have to look over my shoulder in case the climate police catch me turning up my thermostat a few degrees or pull me over for driving an unauthorized distance from my house. I want a future in which my weekend choice is either a quick hypersonic commercial jet flight to enjoy a bit of sunshine on the other side of the world, or a weekender in an orbital zero-gravity gravity amusement park. All we have to do to have a chance to personally experience a glorious future of unlimited energy expenditure, longer, more comfortable lives, and opportunities beyond our wildest dreams is tell today's Greens where they can shove their climate lockdowns. Well said. And that encapsulates the very essence of what is going on right now. There is a death cult that right now is trying its best to suppress the human population and to twist the technologies that could be used to achieve such incredible and amazing things for us as individuals, using those technologies instead to limit us, to suppress us, to surveil, control, track, database, and otherwise regulate our every move, our every action, transaction, interaction on a daily basis, everything you do controlled for the rest of your life. That is the sentiment that is being pumped through these purveyors of mainstream accepted science is settled opinion. And it is up to us to not just say no, but hell no. Our vision of the future should be that one of technology being harnessed for the good of humanity, not for its suppression. And that point particularly resonates with me because I have recently been talking to my son, who is now seven years old. He's now old enough to start to notice changes that are happening in his world, perhaps insignificant changes on the bigger scheme of things, but changes. A store closing here or opening there, a building being demolished here, a new building going up there. We've started to note, it, note that together. And it's something that we sometimes say to each other, oh, the world is changing, everything's changing. Uh, and on that very subject, I cannot for the life of me remember specifically what we were discussing, but we were discussing a change that had happened that wasn't for the better. And my son was puzzled by this. He said, Daddy, change the world should change for the funner, not the badder. And that really struck me. That really struck me, that observation. Because even a child, even a child intuitively understands that we collectively should be and th theoretically throughout history have always been striving for better for our children's generation. We can make the world a better place. We can use all of this uh, vast amount of knowledge that has been accrued over the course of human history to further our ends, and we can also learn from past mistakes in order to make things funner, not badder, as a seven-year-old would put it. And that is the vision that we are starting to see getting swapped out. No, 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 we don't want to improve, we don't want to build, we don't want to expand, we don't want to encapsulate and, and harness this incredible potential for the future. We want to stop humanity from spreading, spreading like a cancer, like it is. Uh, it's a horrible thing that must be suppressed and limited and controlled and regulated. That is the mind of the tyrant. It is a death cult, and they are attempting to inculcate that in the population through their propaganda, trying to convince them that these climate lockdowns and whatever else they're going to institute in the name of saving Mother Earth is for your own good. Just sit down and take it. No. Hell no. We should not just sit down and take it. As with everything else I do, all of these documents and things that I'm citing here today will be linked up in the show notes. I hope you will go and read through it for yourself. Come to your own conclusions and conclusions about what we can and should do to stop this death, death cult from realizing its agenda of innovating to zero. On that note, that's going to do it for this week. James Corbett, CorbettReport.com.